Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mary Ann Valaconis with the New York State Education Department Office of Educational Design and Technology. I know that uh, some of you know me from prior years working with the tech plan. And we also have Maria Rocker here co-presenting with uh, from Morick. Hello, everyone. And we have John Campano, who is from our office, the Office of Educational Design and Technology, and he's also working with the tech plans this year. So we're glad that you could all be here. And just so you know, this session is being recorded. So if you do have um, colleagues that could not make it today, it will be posted to a website page uh, on our website that will be just for um, model schools members. So we will let you know when that's been posted and we'll send you the URL because it's not going to be on a public page. You'll need the URL to, to find that recording. And we'll post other documents there as necessary. And um, speaking of other documents, Michelle has sent me the link to the um, membership for model schools. And she wanted me to remind you that if you had to update the list, you need to get back to her because um, we want to make sure that that list has up-to-date names and contact information since we will be publishing it on the district resources webpage and districts um, may be contacting you as they need assistance with their tech plans. So if you need to update that information, please get back to Michelle. It's, it is um, not available for editing right now, so if it needs to be updated, you need to get that information to Michelle directly. Okay. So we will go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about the agenda and what we're going to cover today. Um, chat. Oh, yes, yeah, the chat. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to point out that the chat feature is available. Please use the chat feature to type us any questions, and John will be monitoring that. And feel free to ask questions throughout the session. Um, also, we'll be trying to watch for raised hands if we can, um, if we needed to unmute you, if you wanted to verbalize a question but please do use the chat feature and we will answer questions as they come in. You don't need to wait uh, till the end of the session. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about um, NYSED's vision and goals and how that relates to the tech plan. Um, and we're talking about the vision of the Office of Educational Design and Technology. And the goals we'll be talking about relate back to the USNI tech plan that was uh, published in 2009. Then we're going to talk about the purpose of the tech plan and the process that we will be using this year. Every um, three years we do a brand new plan and this year has a new, uh, a new um, look to it and feel to it. Then we will actually go into the portal, uh, which is called SED Monitoring and um, in SEDAS. So we will go into the portal and show you around there and how the plan looks. We'll be talking about the framework and guidance and what is actually in the plan, and some guidance on how it should be completed. Um, Maria will talk about the review process and how it's going to work this year, and then um, we will wrap up and take questions. So again, we'll take questions throughout the session. Uh, the new plan this year um, is structured such that the um, NYSED vision and goals, uh, we're asking that the the uh, goals that districts submit within their plan align with NYSED's vision and the goals that are that come from the USNI um, statewide technology plan. So we will be going over those in a minute, and we'll talk about the details of what um, what those goals look like. And then as we talk about the actual questions in the technology plan, we'll show you um, how we're expecting the districts to to line up with their goals, with the goals that are um, outlined here in the, um, in the PowerPoint and also in the plan itself. So the NYSED vision that you see here is the vision of the Office of Educational Design and Technology. And so as you can see, it's all about um, high quality teaching and learning and um, creating positive learning environments so that all, all children can succeed and be prepared for college, career, and citizenship. So it's not really about, you know, what devices do people have and, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's not about that. It's about the, um, the quality of education and how technology can support that. 
Um, so that's, that's really what we're trying to um, get across in this year's plan is how important it is to think of um, the technology as a tool to meet the, the teaching and learning goals. Um, so with that said, um, we'll talk about the nice said goals that are outlined in the plan, the framework and the guidance. And those goals grew out of the 2009 USNI technology plan, but they've been updated based on more current trends in education overall and current trends in educational technology. So you will see those as you work with districts to um, complete the plan, you will see that these goals are listed in the plan and that uh, for each goal that a district shares with us, they'll be expected to tell us which of these goals their goal um, most closely aligns with. So we're really looking to make sure that districts are aligning um, their, their goals and practices and tech around technology to those of, um, of the state. So that's why we're sharing those. And then for those of you that don't know, we just have um, begun working with an educational technology advisory committee. And the first official meeting was held in September. We have, uh, I believe, 27 members. And those members were chosen from an applicant pool of over 500 people. So it was, um, you know, difficult choices to make when we had to winnow down the, the applications. Uh, but we have a selection of P20 educators, um, K through 12 administrators, various educational leaders at different levels, uh, parents, um, uh, representative of the PTA, uh, members of other organizations that have an interest in ed tech. So we have what we feel is a good representative um, selection of people that are out there in the field. And the group um, functions as to give us feedback and advice and assistance on our current and future initiatives related to ed tech. So right now the focus is on technology planning. Sometime in the near future there'll be um, more discussions around technology literacy. Of course, professional development is a big, uh, a big issue when it comes to technology. So we will eventually be convening a subcommittee on that topic. Um, and then online and blended learning is um, the various initiatives are uh, moving forward and we will be more involved in that as time goes forward. And then the innovative practices, we'll talk about that in a little bit, um, how that, what that has to do with the technology plan and also our newsletter. And, and John is the lead person for the newsletter, so just so you know that. Okay, then I'll turn it over to Maria now. Hello, everyone. So we just want to talk a little bit as we get started about the background behind the tech plan, just do a little bit of review on the 2015-2018 plan to remind you what that looks like when it first started, when it was first rolled out. And, you know, initially that was really about having a base instructional technology plan that streamlined some of the data collection initiatives and was focused around uh, strategic planning and compliance with Regulation 100.12. So most school districts who, you know, did tech planning initially uh, three years ago, lots of them across the state did not have an actual tech plan. So it took some time um, to get everybody on board and to get the tech surveys in place. And that survey really focused on these, um, these different areas. And there were, you know, software that was more of an inventory focus, as we talked about the number of devices, the number of not just peripheral devices, but end user devices. Um, a little bit in there about curriculum and instruction and professional development, um, but it really focused on being more of a quantitative tool than a qualitative tool. So this year, as the ETAC committee subcommittee convened to discuss the purpose of the tech plan and what kind of tool, what kind of tool it needed to be. There was a lot of conversation around first, what are NYSED's actual initiatives? So um, they designed the vision and goals so that there was a purpose behind collecting the tech plan simply beyond, beyond just compliance. And then also shifting from a quantitative framework um, such as the tech survey to the current uh, framework, which is much more qualitative and in line with comprehensive technology planning. So you will see throughout uh, the course of the webinar that the framework and the questions that are asked in here are much more uh, qualitative and narrative in form than purely about connect, uh, collecting some of that data. 
And that does not mean that the quantitative data is going to go away, but rather the collection method is going to shift to be more focused on, on collecting data through beds. So that was uh, typically done a while, a while back, and that's going, to, that's going to be the shift moving forward. The reason for that is because a lot of the data that SED needed in terms of technology couldn't be collected well through the portal. So uh, BEDS is really about, is really the best place to collect the kind of data that they need for the reports um, around quantitative technology. And it'll be at the um, school level. Right. As one opposed of, to the district. Right. Level. So the tech plan, the one, the one reason that the uh, collection didn't work is because the tech survey was really at the district level. And so it combined all the devices across all the school buildings. And in order to get good reports, they needed to have a by school, a per school no. um, report. So that's, that's one reason it's shifting uh, more to the bed seat. So as we get ready for uh, this round of tech planning, um, it is still going to be submitted through the status portal. So if you know your technology coordinators or the folks that you're working with uh, need access to the portal, just remind them to go in there, reset their passwords. The um, mini guide is still posted out there for uh, people to access, and you can also contact your RIC reviewer, your RIC certified reviewer in your area if you need um, additional support or help with um, the status portal. So we're going to move right into the 2018-2021 framework and guidance, and Marianne is going to lead off that conversation. Okay. So um, the 2018-2021 framework and guidance, the document has been published. It is on our website, um, as well as the memo that went out to superintendents, and that went out last Wednesday morning. So um, as of today, I, we have not had uh, much feedback. I think people are really busy right now and probably not um, jumping, you know, right up to start working on their plan since they're not due till next October. But um, we're hoping that we'll get a positive response. Um, and we've modified the... Um, the document this year, we put it all into one. If you remember, we used to have one document that listed all the questions, and then we had um, a guidance document that was separate. So we decided to put it all together into one document and um, call it Framework and Guidance, and uh, we think that it's going to work well this way. We, um, you know, the, the questions are so different, you know, that we, we want to make sure that we're putting out a lot of uh, information to get people used to um, working with it differently than the last plan. And of course, you know, no matter how um, much we worked on it and tweaked the questions, I'm sure there'll still be some, you know, issues that'll come up that we'll have to clarify. So we will um, have an FAQ, and the FAQ will be posted on the district resources page and that will be an ongoing effort, which we'll keep adding to as questions arise and we find out perhaps what wasn't as clear as we thought it was uh, when we created the document. Um, so the framework itself is very um, different than last time. The district LEA information, this time around, um, you know, we're not doing the pre-populating of enrollment because we realized over time that we could just pull that enrollment data from um, from beds and we could marry it to the data in the tech plan, so we no longer have to collect that. Um, and as you can see here, we have, um, we were talking about um, strategic planning and as we've asked in the past, we've stressed how important it is to involve um, various stakeholders. So. Um, that's really what we're talking about. Now let Maria talk about the strategic planning. Yep, so as Marianne indicated, we're gonna dive right into the portal and just give you an overview of what each of these questions look like right within the portal. You have access to the guidance and the questions that Jonathan put the link to in the chat. So the first one, the only thing that needs to be entered in the LEA information section is the district administrator who's responsible for entering the test plan data. So that could be you know, a technology coordinator, it could potentially be a superintendent. It really does depend on the school district. But that's the person that FED and the RIC certified reviewer will reach out to as a point of contact for any questions about the plan as it moves through the review and approval process. 
Section two is regarding strategic technology planning. Within this section, uh, first question is about the overall district mission. Anticipate should districts should just be able to copy and paste what their instructional district mission is uh, in this section. Uh, section or question two is about the vision statement that guides instructional technology use in the district. So that's a breakdown of their mission statement into the purpose of their instructional technology. Really, the the driving question behind that is what is the aspiration for the use of instructional tech in the school district? So that's you know that's indicated right underneath it. It's a thousand word limit. So we built in a lot of extra space in here, but typically this will not be more than one sentence, um, as most of you are aware. Yeah, we don't encourage a thousand words. We right. just didn't want to put just available if you need the space. And then number three is about the three goals that will drive the attainment of the vision. And the district is required to list a minimum of three goals for their instructional technology plan. The plan allows for up to five goals, so they can add after they get their third one in there. If they want to list the fourth one, they can click yes, and it will give them a drop down. If they want to list the fifth one, it will also give them a drop down. But they don't need to. So if they, you know, if they want to do it, they can. Uh, but it does require a minimum of three. The goal section uh, really focuses or looks at um, a lot of conversation around this area about how to create effective goals. And the purpose really around this for a qualitative approach was about utilizing the SMART goals approach. So the specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely um, approach to creating those goals. And then the last few questions is one, uh, number six is about summarizing the planning process that's used to develop the answers to the plan. This is about all those multiple stakeholder groups that are included and how many technology plan development meetings um, are held. So this is about those dates, uh, making sure that multiple stakeholders are involved. So whether it's parent representatives, community representatives, students, uh, faculty, staff, and administrators, uh, each of those um, stakeholders need to be listed within this section. Within this section, it will also be kind of important to note that some RIC reviewers may ask that you insert a table here, um, and that's perfectly fine. It might be easier for everyone to keep track of, of their dates and their stakeholder groups and so on if, they, if you utilize a table. So you can do that within here, which brings us, uh, which brings us to the use of the oh, toolbar. The toolbar, yeah. the toolbar actually has to be built into every single every single one that time that there is a narrative piece. Right. So you're going to see it looks a little awkward up here with goals because um, it's a tinier text box. Right. But that is the way that it has to be built throughout the portal. It's one of those little idiosyncrasies that we find um, as we're utilizing the portal. The reason we added it was because we got a lot of requests for people that they wanted more um, flexibility with formatting. So yeah. it got added up you know, requests from the field. But unfortunately, like Maria said, our portal is kind of clunky. And so you add it, but now you have to put it everywhere. So <laughs> please bear with us with that one. Yep. And then question number seven, um, this is where some of one of the professional development section was actually consolidated into this particular section. And that is to describe the professional development plan for building the capacity of educators and administrators um, in the attainment of in the instructional tech vision. So this PD needs to align with uh, the goals that are set. And uh, within this section, you may also need to use a table again with you know, the audience, the method of delivery, um, the time frame that you anticipate being the PD being done. And as it's built in here, I think that for model schools, this is an extremely important section because this is a lot of the work that you are doing. So thinking strategically about how it would be best to lay out this plan, definitely follow the guidance, but then also seek out how your RIC reviewers plan to review this, what would be uh, the most appropriate or efficient and realistic way to accomplish this. But getting you know the model schools work that you do around regional, regional trainings or in-district support, coaching those different pieces, um, definitely build it into number seven. Did you mention the model, the um, smart schools? Yeah. Yes. So number seven is also if you uh, have districts who are filing a smart schools investment plan, this question will appear in their smart schools plan. So it, the response must align with what the district's response is to any related questions in their smart schools investment plan. And they really um, and they do check they, this. they take it seriously. Yes, they do PD is very important, even though. They're not funding the PD. They want to make sure that the correct, you know, the adequate PD is being offered so the technology will be utilized. Yeah. 
And then the last piece is about how the instructional technology goals are being measured and evaluated during and after implementation. So if there are any tools or metrics that are being used as part of the evaluation process, whether it's a locally developed resource or whether it's a tool like uh, the Bright Bites uh, teaching and learning module, there are different ones that are out there um, that could be utilized to evaluate those goals and the implementation of them. So um, just explaining what that looks like, and they are going to look at this a little bit more specifically, not just in the review process, but at SED, because they want to ensure that these are actually goals that are being accomplished. So it's important to make sure that it's not just a matter of holding tech plans where you look at your tech plan, but also what are you doing to specifically evaluate the success of the implementation. All right, so that's it for section two. Any questions on section two before we move on? All right, so we're going to move into section, section three. Uh, section three is broken into three different areas of the action plan, and this is about building out uh, building out the goals, the action plan for each one of the goals. And there are three different sections, uh, one action plan for each goal. So if the district does have five goals, um, they, may need to, they may need to focus on what their top three goals are. No, actually, and you can do all five. If you have five, then you can, you can create an action plan for four and five. It'll pop up okay. if you do have four. All right, so the action plan section, um, the first thing to do is go in and copy what the first goal um, that aligns with that action plan item. Once you copy that goal in, then number two is that you actually need to select which SED goal best aligns with this district goal. So if it's about um, developing a strategic vision and goals to support student achievement and engagement, about tech integration, if it's about culturally and linguistically responsive learning environments, if it's about equitable access, or if it's about um, a robust, secure network and connectivity, if it's about access to relevant and rigorous PD. So which one does it best align with? And then number three is what target student population check all that apply? This one um, could vary a little bit. It might be that you have a one-to-one -one initiative that you're focusing on rolling out for pre-K through second grade. So if you're doing that for iPads, then you would click pre-K through second grade. But if you're looking at an initiative that's specific to providing equitable access to technology for uh, migrant students, then you could go in there and it would be targeted towards migrant students. So it's not anticipated you would check all these text, box, text boxes, um, but definitely the ones that apply to that specific goal. Number four is about the action items that correspond with the goal. So it's important to note in this section that every single cell in the table must be populated. So if you have less than four action steps for the goal, you need to enter NA into columns two, three, four, and five, and choose June and 2021 in the date columns for all un unneeded rows in the table. This information up here is really important because it won't let you continue unless you've actually populated those cells. So you, that's one reason it's listed up there. Again, it's another quirk of the portal but it is listed at the top, so as districts are filling that out, it might be an important thing for you to know if you're assisting them to let them know when they get in the portal, this is one thing they may need to do um, when they're in there. Um, I, John, were we going to add a cost column there? Was it this one? Or was it? I thought it was. We might. Yeah, I think we were going to be looking at that. And the other thing to know is that this, that the portal is still in draft form, so the, this portal will not be released to the whole state until sometime during the spring, um, late winter, early spring, somewhere in that time frame. So right now what you're seeing is what has been populated so far, but there may be a couple you know, things that look a little bit different than the template and the guidance that's in front of you. Just something to note, um, definitely follow the template and the guidance in front of you, but we want you to at least see what it looks like within the portal. Um, as you prepare to support um, school districts with their tech planning. All right, so then each action step includes um, a specific category. So what action item, what 
um, action step does this align to budgeting, learning spaces, infrastructure, curriculum, um, cybersecurity, purchasing, what action steps, you know, in, is the category in, in section one. That's partly for reporting. So when we pull these out, we can see how those action steps are aligned. Then a description of the action step, who is responsible for making sure this action step happens. And that could be any one of these. There is an other, so if you, you know, if you do need an other, then you can click other and enter the title in the next column to the right. And then the anticipated month of completion. And finally, the anticipated year of completion. And really, if this is, an, if this is gonna be, you know, anticipated that it's gonna be completed in 1819, then those action items or action steps may be much more specific. And as you get down to act the goals or action steps that are related to 2021, it might get a little bit more general until you get to that point in the tax plan, but at least you have a, a plan for moving forward um, in the direction from um, the current place to 2021. So as you said, there are four action steps associated with each goal. If you need more action steps, then you can continue into question five. And question five is uh, optional. So if you need more action steps, and you can utilize um, the action items in uh, question five to be able to answer it. You don't have to do that, districts do not have right. to do that, but it is available to them if they want to. So you'll see that there aren't any red asterisks here um, because this table uh, is optional. Totally optional, right. Yep. Any questions on the action plan section? Okay, no questions. Then we'll move into um, section four, NYSED initiatives alignment. Okay, so NYSED initiatives alignment, um, basically what we are looking for here is to make sure that... Um, oh, Mary, can we do have a question? Oh, okay. Uh, the best part, second half of the action steps have to have, to have that mandatory input in data. It does not because it doesn't have a red asterisk next to it. Only if it has a red asterisk does it need that mandated data. Specifically, I think you're asking about like the um, this section here. All cells in the table must be populated. They don't need to be populated because it is optional. Right. So only in question four do they have to be populated. Right. But question five, you could, you know, fill in however much you want of that table. Okay. Thank you for that question. Yeah. Okay, so the first question under NYSED initiatives in alignment, explain how the district's use of instructional technology will serve as part of a comprehensive and su sustained effort to support programs and um, performance improvement. So basically what we're saying here is we want to make sure that the district is being clear about how this technology plan is going to help with the, um, the attainment of all educational objectives. So that's what that question is about. And so the whole plan this time around is linking, you know, goals to outcomes, overall educational outcomes. And again, as Maria said, it's not um, focused on the, um, uh, you know, quantitative information. Okay, so the next series of questions are about students with disabilities. And so um, last time around in the prior plan, we had some um, people, you know, feel like, the questions um, about students with disabilities were kind of, you know, there were two questions and they were kind of similar and it wasn't clear what, you know, what we were trying to get at between the two questions. So this time around we have a little bit more um, specificity. And so the first question is talking about how will the district um, use in, in um, instructional technology to make sure that the students with disabilities have access, can access and participate in the general curriculum and talking about differentiated instruction. So, um, and individual, meeting individualized needs. So it's all about um, personalization. And, and there is an example there, so if that, that might be helpful to the district. And uh, again, it's referenced that we're referring to the intentional application of technologies and strategies that are specifically used for students with disabilities. And I would say, Maria, that was, um, said that way because we didn't want people to just repeat what they were doing for all students. We really want it to be uh, specific to students with disabilities. And then the next question, um, question three, is um, check boxes. 
So you can check all that apply, and then there is an other, and it's asking for how will the district use technology to address the needs of students with disabilities. And there's some suggestions here, but I'm sure that many districts have other, um, other ways that they will work with students with disabilities related to technology. And also I'll point out that the um, Smart Schools Investment Plan um, the people who review that will be comparing the answers in the tech plan to the answers in their smart schools investment plan. So districts need to make sure that they can align that they can align that and um, that it is aligned. And the same thing with the next question. The um, those of, those districts that have applied for their smart schools um, bond act money will um, probably have noticed that there is a that they, the people who review those plans, not in our office, they, um, there's a separate office that works on, on most of them. We do a review, but they do a very um, careful review of everything, very, you know, down to very um, intense review of the finances. But they're also very much interested in professional development, like I said earlier. So here are some options of um, professional development topics. And again, there will always be an other so that districts can add to that, but they want to see um, what is going to be done to offer professional development to teachers um, around the use of, edu of uh, educational technology for students with disabilities. And then um, we've added questions, the same um, type of questions for working with students of English language learners, multilingual learners. So you're going to have a series of questions that are somewhat similar, um, asking uh, check all that apply as far as specific activities designed to um, work with ELs and multilingual learners. And we will do the same with um, um, PD and we will be um, asking to select, you could click on the, the select button, yeah. This is just a yes or no question. The district's instructional technology plan addresses the needs of um, ELs, and that is, um, you know, some districts might say no because they might not have any L or multi-language uh, learners, depending on the district. So we want to make sure that um, districts are aware. It's not like they're going to, you know, it's some kind of black mark or something if they say no, because there are times when that's perfectly logical that they would say no. And then um, we have then if the answer is yes, then um, how, what, um, in the, is it in the five most spoken languages, the 10 most, the 15 most, or other? And other can, is, can be explained if there are not that many uh, different languages. So um, we, we do have um, some guidance on that. It's not here in the, in the portal, but um, we do have some guidance on how to answer that question if you don't have five languages or more. So there will be some guidance on that. Again, there'll be a professional development plan, um, and we need to see what kind of professional development will be provided for ELVES. And we also, um, and then the next question is about, question eight is about um, using instructional technology to facilitate culturally responsive instruction. And that is a very important um, topic that is, um, if you, you know, see in the literature, there's just a lot of discussion of that. Um, so that's why that question has been um, asked here. And there are some options, plus there's always an other option. So this is, um, that summarizes the NYSED initiatives alignment section of the plan. And I'll turn it over to Maria. Do you have, have any questions? All right, section five is the administrative management plan. And a few different sections were combined into this one. So the first is staffing. So if you will remember, um, staffing was divided up across two or three different areas of the last version of the tech survey. Um, this tech plan combines them all into one and asks for uh, the count as of the plan submission date of all staff whose primary responsibility is delivering technology integration training and support and or technical support for teachers or across the district. Um, so the first is your district technology leadership. So if you have 
um, you know, a director of innovation, if you have a coordinator of technology, if you have a director of technology, if you have a chief technology officer, if you have a coordinator of instructional technology, th those, um, those folks would go uh, within the district technology leadership section. If you have instructional support, such as a model schools coordinator or an instructional technology specialist, and the staff member's primary responsibility is the integration of technology into curriculum, then that would go there. Um, technical support and examples of people in this category, titles in this category could include network engineers, system administrators, computer support and repair, uh, computer aides whose primary role is technical support. So if there are you know, multiple people in a school district who are providing technical support, then um, they, you would add them all up, their FTE equivalent, and enter that here. So an FTE count for any one individual should not exceed 1.0, but because you're combining, you could potentially be combining three or four people, um, then you would, you know, you could have a 1.0 for district technology leadership and a 3.6 for technical support and a 1.0 for instructional support or, you know, a 3.0 for instructional support, just depending. So, you, you know, you can add it up. Um, and if it's zero, if you don't have anybody in technology leadership, then you would still enter zero. Mm -hmm. So you can't leave blank. those uh, text boxes blank. Every text box has to be completed. The second question is around the investment plan. So this is providing the three-year investment plan to support the vision and goals. All cells, again, in this table must be populated. So if you have less than four items in your plan, uh, you need to choose NA for columns one, two, four, five, and six, and put zero in column three, which will be the estimated cost for each unneeded row. So each of these has a red asterisk next to it, as you will see, because that, ma that makes it mandatory, then you do have to fill in each of the text boxes. So if you have, you know, your top four purchases, most districts have a top five purchases uh, that they're going to be making over the next um, three years. But if, you know, they don't, for some reason or another, those text boxes still need to be completed. And there were a couple things that were, um, that were updated here. The first is the anticipated item or service. We actually combined a lot of the long list that was here before into these different categories. So they'll choose the category that fits the best. And then if it is an other, because something's not listed here for some reason, then you can click other and enter uh, what it is in the column to the right. And then what the estimated cost will be, if it's one time annual or both, uh, what the potential funding source is, you can check more than one. So if you plan to use, for example, grants and um, you plan to purchase, you know, some of it through both these or a combination of these two, then um, you could, you need to, you can check both boxes. And then if you choose other as a potential funding source in uh, that column, then you will need to enter what that funding source is going to be in the column to the right. And the NA is there for when you don't need that row, and but you Correct. have to fill something in. Yep. So. so if you don't have an other, you still have to write NA in there because you can't leave those text boxes blank. Right. So there's room for four different um, options, and then we move into question three, which is about the loan of instructional computer hardware to students legally attending non-public schools. Um, if you click yes, no, or not applicable, um, there are no public schools, no non-public schools in the district. If you click yes, um, there isn't a drop down. You just click yes, click no, or click not yep. applicable. Question four is a new addition. This is to please indicate whether or not the district has a public website. If the district has a public website, then the URL does need to be entered here. Um, this was a question that actually was put in at the last minute um, by SED, so there were some questions around this um, space uh, from the field, so this, is, um, this was a last minute addition. And then number five, uh, through five through 12, 13 um, are about um, data security and privacy. So number five is to in indicate whether or not the district has a, a, assigned a specific person with responsible for information security. If you click yes, um, then you need to enter that person's, that responsible person's title in box A. Please note that if you click um, 
no, you don't need to enter anyone, but you still, you do need to click on it. So um, yes or no. And then question six, please indicate whether or not the district has assigned a specific person with responsibility for information privacy. Um, click yes, and you will also need to identify that person's title. Then number seven, has a district-wide information security and or privacy audit ever been performed in the district? Um, click yes. If you click yes, then you will have two other questions that need to be answered. One, if yes was selected, please identify how often a security and or privacy audit has been performed, once yearly, every two years, every five years, irregularly or sporadically. And then uh, letter B is please indicate whether this audit was performed by an independent third party contractor. Question number eight is about um, this, uh, digital citizenship. So does the school district provide for educating minors about appropriate online behavior um, regarding social networking websites and in chat rooms, including that? Um, if you do, just click yes or no. If you don't, click no. Number nine, does the district provide for educating minors about cyberbullying awareness and response? Yes or no. Number 10, does the district have an internet safety policy? Um, there are two versions of yes here. The first yes, I will yes and I will upload the policy. You can choose the file and use and attach it or yes, and you'll provide the URL to the policy. So if it's posted on the district's website, then they can just provide a URL to the policy. Or no, the district does not have such a policy. So if they do have a policy, SED does want a copy of it. All these links, um, it was very specifically told to work certified reviewers, all these links will be checked to make sure they are not broken, that they go directly to the policy for the entire time our entire period of the tax plan. So if, you know, if the district's going to be moving their website, then you might, they may want to upload the policy here so that, you know, FED has access to that policy. It's just, just a tip. Hey, Maria, I have a question. Sure. Mm -hmm. So if they have a, an AUP mm -hmm. that includes their internet safety policy, that includes their cyberbullying policy, mm -hmm. that includes their, Parent Bill of Rights all in this in the same, let's say, document, just for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. Would they have the same URL in all of those places? And then the folks who are working with the model schools um, as a facilitator would be checking the entire document and pulling out the parts that have said policies? Yes. I, I mean, that's what I will probably end up talking to to our reason about doing, yes. At least pulling out so it's easily accessible, um, even if it's in the same one. If it's the, the same URL to the acceptable use, then I would copy the same URL in each of them, and then just indicate you know, what page number it's on, if we can. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah one, one of the things that was happening in the prior plan was people would provide a URL um, to their, and then it would just go to like their home page, and we couldn't find the policies. So this is, you know, why we stress that it needs to go directly to the to the policy so we can mm -hmm. find it. Yep. The so number twelve um, is about the parents' bill of rights. So the URL uh, to the parents' bill of rights, or you can upload. Um, or if the district does not have a parent or does have it, but it is not posted online, you will upload the policy or no, you don't have a parent's bill of rights for data privacy and security. Um, question 13, does the district have Wait, an I have another question. Yeah, that's fine. Um, obviously, they're required to have a parent bill of rights posted. Mm -hmm. So if, if they don't, the model schools folks, and they say, well, we don't have one, are we supposed to answer no? Because legally, we're supposed to have one. The response of the model schools folks should be? Should be no if they don't have one. Even though they're obviously not adhering to Ed Law 2D then. Right. And as we, we had that conversation, these questions are coming from the chief privacy officer. So these questions weren't anything that like ETAC or the field really had much input in in terms of what was required for these questions. Um, 
So yes, if they don't have one, if they don't have a breach policy, if they don't have a cyberbullying policy, if they don't have, you know, then they would answer no. The district does not have a policy. It would probably be, you know, I mean, we've talked to districts about that. Like, you need to go and dig through. When we went through this, the last round, you know, there were some who didn't know the date of approval for some of their policies. Right. They had them, but they just didn't have the dates for them. So some of it might be a matter of, of digging it up. Uh, for some of the ones that are more recent, like the Parent Bill of Rights, um, this may be an opportunity for them to get one completed before the tech plan is due. due right, because they have till October 26th. To well, they have until their regional deadline. Well, right, right. Yeah. I right. mean, to us, we need it. Yeah. There were a lot of questions brought up in this section, too, during the RIC Certified Reviewer training. Um, and I think some of that, some of those questions were taken back so that the guidance could be um, completed. But if you have more questions, then we can certainly, or uh, Mary Ann's office can add them to the FAQs too. Yeah. They're, they're very good questions, but. Yeah. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, last one, number 14, is about a direct link to the district's tech plan or a copy of the approved NYSED tech plan posted on the district's website. So this is what they can pull from the portal once they've completed it or once it's been approved. Um, but you do need to have the link right to the, doc the page the document is on or the document itself. And the reason for that is, like Marianne indicated earlier, some of those um, links that were being sent in were going to a home page or going to a random district page. and so. Uh, they want to make sure that the instructional tech plan is posted, so they will be checking all these links that they are asking for when they are when they are approving them. So RIC certified reviewers, that was stressed during that training as well. Uh, so they will be double checking all those links um, during the review process. We got a new question. Yep. Will any of the information from the old plans be brought over to the new system? No, uh, the reason for that is because um, to move to move information from the old plans to the new plans, it is a completely different plan. So in terms of um, aligning up sections to get them to copy over, um, that's not possible in uh, the current tech plan template. I don't think there really are any any questions that are the same. Yeah, there are some duplicate questions, but they're brought in in different sections, yeah. so there isn't any way to pull that information in. And some of that, a lot of that information may have changed over the course of the last three years, whether it's staffing or investment plans or, um, you know, the technology planning process. They can certainly copy and paste it from their old plan if, if it applies again. They can have access. Yeah, they do. And have they access do have the right. They portal. do have access to their 1518 plan in the outbox section of their portal. Yep. Good question. There's no rollover button this year. Right. Any other questions in the administrative management plan section? Any other chat? Okay, so this last part of the um, plan is totally optional. We hope that a lot of people will take advantage of it, but uh, but it is optional. And what we're looking for is um, to create a, sort of a, a mini database of innovative um, projects and um, initiatives that districts are taking, that are um, implementing. And that way um, we can sort of be available as a clearinghouse. So if someone's looking for gee, I'm looking for somebody that's got a really good uh, program on digital citizenship, or, you know, I'm looking for districts that have, that are really doing a lot with maker spaces, or, um, you know, I'm looking for professional development ideas. Then what we would do is use the information that's, that people provide in this section to say, okay, um, here's five districts that have shared with us that they're doing um, some innovative projects in this area. And then we would share that um, that information, that contact information. So it's not going to be published anywhere. It's not going to be out there on the web. Um, it's going to be stored here at SED, and then people can contact us to get the the information. Mm -hmm. So the second, um, first we have a list of topics, and then you can um, add your own topics. And then the second question is, 
if, if the district wants to provide one contact point for all of the innovative programs, they would fill out question, answer the answer to question two. But if they, let's say they had four different um, areas that they checked in question one, but they had different contact people for each of those areas, then they would answer um, question three instead, and they would provide the individual contact points, for, and they would check off which topic they were um, related to. So that's the best we could do with the functionality of the portal um, to come up with a way to collect that information. And again, we'll maintain that information um, in some kind of a spreadsheet and, and be able to share that with people. And really it's about, um, as I'm sure all of you know from going to various conferences, people are always looking for you know, ways to hook up with other people and, and um, pick their brain and get their ideas and share share what's going on in their districts. And, and that's also um, the driving force behind our new newsletter that John is the person that um, is, is the lead person for that and is in charge of the newsletter, um, which we've published um, one, one um, issue in November and um, we'll be we'll publishing another one probably the very first week of January, it looks like for now. And um, so we welcome articles from everyone uh, in the field um, we encourage you, we encourage you to encourage your district. Um, we're looking for innovative programs, initiatives, um, any kind of articles related to ed tech. And then um, each month we'll publish, say, three or four different articles. And people, uh, we've gotten some really good articles. If you haven't seen our November issue, I thought there was some really neat stuff that's going on out there. So we're trying to link people together the best way we can um, to share this, share new information with each other. And, and support each other and um, and maybe brag a little bit about the great stuff that they're doing with ed tech. Um, I think um, there's just a lot of, you know, a lot of things going on and it's really, um, a, you know, we want to hear about what's working, you know, and maybe what happened that was a challenge. So other people are kind of forewarned. If you do this, you might incur, you know, you might in, encounter that. And here's how we handled that, you know, that challenge. So, um, so far, so good. We've been getting some really good articles and um, and we're happy with the progress so far. And we've got um, a listserv and that everybody on the listserv gets announcements when the newsletter's published. And also, if you're on the listserv, you'll get any other kind of announcements that um, the, uh, the EdTech office puts out. We have over 500 people on the listserv so far and we encourage people to um, sign up for the listserv all you have to do is send an email to edtech at niced.gov um, and um, make sure that the email includes your organization information so that if we know you fit into one of the categories of people that can be on the listserv. And um, we encourage you to do that and to encourage other people. So that's all I have on the Innovative EdTech programs. Maria, can you think of anything else on that? Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Okay. Okay, so the last piece is just to talk through a little bit about the timeline and the regional review process. So the anticipated timeline is right now late fall, so as most of you are probably aware, the memo and guidance went out last week. So districts um, who have, districts have received the memo and the guidance. And the portal, as we indicated earlier, will open in early 2018. So it's anticipated probably sometime between the end of January and early March. And then the survey will be due to the Regional Information Center certified reviewers for review during spring or beginning of summer 2018. Each region will still be setting their own deadline. Mm -hmm. So uh, in terms of the approval um, the, or the review process, that will happen over the course of the summer. And the survey is due for approval to SED by October 26th of 2018. So that's a Friday. Um, so regional information centers, depending on the size of the region, um, may need to have those earlier. So April, May timeframe, um, it really does depend on the region. So you will need to contact your RIC certified reviewers um, to find out what that deadline is specific to your region um, that you're working with. So any questions on the anticipated timeline? Uh, reviewers will be looking primarily at the, uh, looking at the plan through the logical, complete, and consistent lens. So is the plan logical, is it complete, and is it consistent um, with the information that is presented in the guidance? So um, that's really the main criteria for those reviewers. They have a checklist that they're working off of. Um, 
but when you're looking at it, if, if you are assisting plans with, or assisting districts with the development of the plans, then following that guidance, um, that will, you know, put that district in a good position for the regional review process and for approvals in October. Um, the print of the portal, um, that's what the guidance document is. It, it, it mm -hmm. contains all the questions that are available uh, that are going to be in the portal. So if they're completing them, completing the plan according to that outline, then um, it's just a matter of copying and pasting it into the portal. Right. Yep. Everything you see in the document that's been published should be pretty much identical to. So Jonathan's going to put a copy of that link um, in the chat now. All right, in terms of next steps following today's training, um, depending on what your local uh, process is, you need to go back and perhaps do a little bit of internal review on your local process. Uh, contact your RIC certified reviewers for what those regional deadlines are going to be, and then um, work with school districts as appropriate um, in your region with uh, technology planning. So any questions? Um, the resources, uh, Jonathan's, been, Jonathan's been posting a lot of links in the chat, so, if, you, uh, if you're using those links, that's great. Um, most of them are posted at the fcd.gov backslash edtech site. Um, Marianne? Wanna... Yeah, I just wanted to um, reiterate that we will be creating a model school page so that the recording of this webinar will be posted there and any other information <clears throat> that we feel we need to get out to you will be there. And also, always check the, um, the district resources page. And, and we will keep updating the FAQ, and every document that we post will always have a last updated date on it. So, um, you know, it's better to just go to the website rather than, you know, save or print a copy of the document um, and that might or might not be the most updated version. Like I said, we, we welcome feedback from the field, from districts, from model schools, from RIC reviewers. So we will, you know, modify different things as time goes on based on that feedback. We don't keep things static. Now, the questions in the plan are not going to keep changing, but we might update the guidance, um, provide additional guidance, things like that. Um, and, oh, one other thing um, we didn't mention was there's no longer a help button in the tech plan. Um, that help button used to go to a place called data support. So going forward this year, um, if people have questions and they are um, in the um, portal, we're going to have at the bottom of every page, which we don't have yet, correct, John, at the bottom of every page in the tech plan, you're going to be able to link to our resources page. So that's something that's, that's going to be added. So that way if a district is in there working um, and they say, well, geez, I'm not sure about this, they can link to the resources page and they can go to the FAQ, they can go to the framework and guidance document, um, and that's where they can get some answers. And we always encourage them to also contact their model schools person that they've been working with or contact their RIC reviewer. Um, we, we prefer that they work closely with model schools and RICs um, primarily and then, you know, come to us if, if um, they need to. You know, we're not trying to usurp anybody's role but we want to be there as a resource. So whichever way they want to go for help. But if we do get questions um, from districts, we'll always let uh, model schools and or RIC reviewer know that the question came through to us, whoever that person has been working with, so that you know what's going on uh, with the district. So we're looking forward to this. I think it's going to be a good year. Um, I think people are going to be happy to see in the memo that they are not going to have to update the plan every year. It's going to be the three-year plan, and then updates are optional. Um, and most people would update, I would say, primarily if they're going to um, have an SSDA application uh, or if they want to use the plan for some other funding opportunity and they want it to align with that, um, but it's totally optional. So thank you so much for your service to the district and for your attendance at the webinar. We appreciate that very much. Any further questions? Um, yeah, somebody said it was very helpful. Oh, good. Thanks, everyone.